Top 25 Chief Technology Officer, CTO, Interview Questions and Answers. In today's competitive tech landscape, the role of a Chief Technology Officer is crucial for driving innovation and strategic direction within organizations. Preparing for a CTO interview requires understanding both technical expertise and leadership capabilities. This video presents the top 25 interview questions and answers that every aspiring CTO should know. By exploring these key topics, candidates can enhance their interview preparedness and confidently showcase their skills and vision. 1. How would you define your vision for technology within an organization? A compelling vision for technology within an organization centers on aligning technology initiatives with business goals while fostering a culture of innovation. This involves anticipating industry trends and customer needs, ensuring the technology roadmap supports strategic objectives. The vision should inspire collaboration across departments, emphasizing agility and adaptability. Building a technology ecosystem that encourages experimentation and continuous improvement is vital. Ultimately, the vision should empower teams to leverage technology as a driving force for business transformation, enhancing efficiency, customer engagement, and competitive advantage. 2. What is your leadership style, and how do you inspire technical teams? My leadership style is a blend of transformational and servant leadership. I believe in empowering my team by providing them with the tools, resources, and autonomy they need to excel. Open communication is crucial. I encourage feedback and foster an environment where everyone feels valued. I inspire technical teams by setting a clear vision and aligning it with their personal goals. Regularly celebrating successes, providing opportunities for professional development, and creating a culture of innovation helps keep the team motivated and engaged in their work. 3. How do you balance innovation with practicality in technology decisions? Balancing innovation with practicality involves a strategic evaluation of emerging technologies against current business needs. I prioritize understanding the core objectives of the organization and the potential impact of new solutions. This means fostering a culture where experimentation is encouraged, but within defined limits that align with our goals. Regularly engaging stakeholders helps in assessing risks and benefits, ensuring that any innovative approach is feasible and sustainable. Collaboration with cross-functional teams aids in validating ideas, ensuring that we are not only pushing boundaries but also meeting immediate operational requirements. 4. Can you describe a time when you had to realign a team's priorities with business goals? In a previous role, our team was focused on developing a new feature that, while innovative, was not aligned with our quarterly business objectives. Recognizing this misalignment, I organized a meeting with stakeholders to discuss the strategic goals. By presenting data that highlighted the importance of customer retention over new features, I guided the team to pivot towards enhancing existing functionalities. This realignment not only improved our product's market fit but also resulted in a 20% increase in customer satisfaction scores within two months. Engaging the team in this process fostered ownership and enthusiasm for our adjusted priorities. 5. What do you see as the biggest challenge facing CTOS today? One of the biggest challenges facing CTOS today is navigating the rapid pace of technological change while ensuring alignment with business goals. As organizations increasingly rely on digital solutions, CTOS must evaluate emerging technologies and determine which align best with their strategic vision. Additionally, managing cybersecurity threats is a critical concern, as the stakes for data breaches continue to rise. Balancing innovation with cost effectiveness and ensuring teams remain agile in response to shifting market demands also presents significant hurdles for technology leaders. 6. How do you ensure technology strategy aligns with business objectives? Aligning technology strategy with business objectives involves close collaboration with stakeholders across the organization. Regular communication ensures that technology initiatives support business goals. I prioritize understanding the company's vision and challenges, translating them into technical requirements. Utilizing a framework for evaluating projects based on their impact on business outcomes helps maintain focus. Additionally, I advocate for agile methodologies that allow for flexibility and quick adjustments as business needs evolve, ensuring that tech investments drive value and support strategic aims effectively. 7. What is your approach to evaluating emerging technologies for adoption? When evaluating emerging technologies for adoption, I follow a structured approach. First, I conduct a thorough analysis of the technology's potential benefits and risks. This includes assessing its alignment with our strategic goals and understanding the competitive landscape. I also gather input from cross-functional teams to ensure diverse perspectives are considered. Prototyping or piloting the technology in controlled environments allows us to gauge its effectiveness. Finally, I monitor industry trends and maintain relationships with tech vendors to stay informed and agile in decision-making. 8. How do you measure the ROI of technology investments? Measuring the ROI of technology investments involves both quantitative and qualitative assessments. Start by defining clear objectives and key performance indicators, KPIS, aligned with business goals. Track cost savings, efficiency gains, and revenue growth directly attributable to the technology. 
Additionally, consider user satisfaction and employee productivity improvements as indirect benefits. Regularly review these metrics to ensure ongoing alignment with strategic objectives. Engaging stakeholders throughout the process promotes transparency and helps articulate the value derived from technology initiatives. 9. Can you describe your experience with scaling technology to support business growth? Scaling technology effectively requires a multifaceted approach. In my previous role, we faced rapid user growth, which necessitated a shift to a microservices architecture. This enabled us to deploy updates independently, enhancing agility. I implemented automated scaling solutions that adjusted resources based on traffic patterns. Close collaboration with cross-functional teams ensured alignment on business objectives. Regular performance monitoring allowed us to identify bottlenecks early. This proactive strategy not only supported growth but also improved user experience, driving customer satisfaction and retention. 10. How would you balance short-term deliverables with long-term tech strategy? Balancing short-term deliverables with long-term tech strategy requires a structured approach. First, I prioritize projects based on business impact and alignment with our strategic vision. By setting clear milestones for both immediate tasks and long-term objectives, I ensure teams maintain focus on quick wins while also investing in foundational work. Regular communication is essential. I facilitate discussions between stakeholders to align expectations. Agile methodologies help us adapt to changing priorities, allowing for flexibility in delivering value without compromising strategic goals. This dual focus fosters sustainable growth and innovation. 11. What emerging technologies do you believe will have the greatest impact in the next five years? The greatest impact in the next five years will likely come from advancements in artificial intelligence, specifically generative AI and machine learning. These technologies will transform industries by automating processes and enabling data-driven decision-making. Additionally, quantum computing has the potential to revolutionize problem-solving capabilities in fields such as drug discovery and cryptography. The rise of 5G technology will enhance connectivity, supporting the Internet of Things, IoT, and smart cities. Finally, advancements in blockchain will improve transparency and security in various sectors, including finance and supply chain management. 12. How do you evaluate whether to build in-house solutions or purchase third-party software? Evaluating whether to build in-house solutions or purchase third-party software involves several key factors. First, assess the specific needs of the organization, considering both current and future requirements. Analyze the total cost of ownership, including development, maintenance, and support for in-house solutions versus licensing fees and potential customization for third-party options. Consider the strategic alignment of the solution with business goals and the availability of internal expertise. Additionally, evaluate the time to market. Sometimes, purchasing can lead to quicker deployment. Prioritize flexibility and scalability based on anticipated growth or changes in technology. 13. What's your experience with cloud migration in multi-cloud environments? My experience with cloud migration involves leading several projects that transitioned on-premises infrastructure to cloud platforms. I have worked with various cloud providers, focusing on optimizing costs and enhancing performance. In multi-cloud environments, I prioritize seamless integration and interoperability between services to avoid vendor lock-in. This approach allows us to leverage the strengths of different platforms while ensuring data security and compliance. Effective communication with stakeholders throughout the migration process is crucial for aligning technical capabilities with business objectives and minimizing disruption. 14. How do you approach system architecture for resilience and scalability? When approaching system architecture, I prioritize modular design and microservices to enhance resilience and scalability. By decoupling components, we can isolate failures and scale parts of the system independently allowing for better resource allocation. I also emphasize redundancy and failover mechanisms to maintain uptime. Utilizing cloud services for elastic scaling ensures that we can handle varying loads efficiently. Continuous monitoring and automated deployment are vital for quickly identifying and addressing bottlenecks, ensuring that the architecture adapts seamlessly to changing demands. 15. Can you share an example of leading digital transformation in a previous role? One significant example of leading digital transformation was during my tenure at a mid-sized retail company. We faced challenges with outdated legacy systems that hindered agility and customer engagement. I spearheaded a project to implement a cloud-based customer relationship management platform, integrating AI for personalized marketing. This initiative not only streamlined operations but also improved customer satisfaction scores by 30%. By fostering cross-department collaboration and engaging stakeholders throughout the process, we ensured a smooth transition and achieved measurable business outcomes. 16. How do you prioritize cybersecurity within your organization? Prioritizing cybersecurity begins with cultivating a security-first culture. It involves continuous training and awareness programs for all employees, emphasizing their role in protecting sensitive information. Implementing a robust risk assessment framework helps identify vulnerabilities and prioritize mitigation strategies. 
Regular audits and monitoring of systems ensure compliance with industry standards. Collaboration with IT teams and other departments is crucial for developing incident response plans. Allocating resources effectively to both preventive measures and incident response is essential for maintaining a resilient security posture. 17. What frameworks or practices do you use for risk management in IT? In IT risk management, I leverage established frameworks such as NIST Cybersecurity Framework and ISO 31000. These provide structured approaches to identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks. Regular risk assessments help in pinpointing vulnerabilities, while continuous monitoring ensures that we adapt to evolving threats. I also advocate for implementing a risk register to document risks, their potential impacts, and mitigation strategies. Additionally, involving stakeholders across departments fosters a culture of risk awareness, making it easier to prioritize and address technological risks effectively. 18. How do you ensure compliance with data protection and privacy regulations? Ensuring compliance with data protection and privacy regulations involves a multifaceted approach. First, it's essential to stay informed about relevant laws and regulations, such as GDPR or CCPA. Regular training for employees on data handling practices is crucial. Implementing robust data governance policies and conducting regular audits helps identify vulnerabilities. Additionally, collaborating with legal and compliance teams ensures that our practices align with regulatory requirements. By fostering a culture of privacy awareness and accountability, organizations can mitigate risks and enhance trust among customers and stakeholders. 19. How would you respond to a major system outage or cyber attack? In the event of a major system outage or cyber attack, immediate communication is essential. I would initiate an incident response plan that includes assessing the impact, containing the threat, and restoring services as quickly as possible. A dedicated team would work to investigate the root cause while keeping stakeholders informed. After resolving the issue, I would conduct a thorough post-mortem analysis to identify lessons learned and improve our security posture. Regular drills and updates to our incident response plan ensure preparedness for future incidents. 20. What's your philosophy on balancing innovation with security? In today's rapidly evolving tech landscape, fostering innovation while ensuring security is crucial. I believe in embedding security into the innovation process from the start. This proactive approach ensures that new ideas are developed with security considerations at the forefront, rather than as an afterthought. Encouraging a culture of continuous learning helps teams stay updated on both the latest technological advancements and security threats. Regular risk assessments and collaboration between security and development teams facilitate a balanced approach, allowing us to explore innovative solutions without compromising safety. 21. How do you attract, retain, and develop top tech talent? To attract top tech talent, it's essential to create a compelling employer brand that highlights the organization's mission, culture, and the opportunities for growth and innovation. Offering competitive salaries, benefits, and flexible work arrangements can also make a significant difference. Retaining talent involves fostering an environment of continuous learning and professional development, where employees feel valued and recognized for their contributions. Implementing mentorship programs and providing pathways for career advancement are crucial in developing talent, helping team members reach their full potential while aligning their goals with the organization's vision. 22. How do you promote collaboration between technical and non-technical teams? Promoting collaboration between technical and non-technical teams involves creating an open environment where communication thrives. Regular cross-departmental meetings can help align goals and foster understanding. Utilizing collaborative tools that allow for shared projects and feedback encourages teamwork. Offering workshops that educate non-technical staff about technical concepts bridges the knowledge gap. Celebrating joint successes builds camaraderie, while encouraging informal interactions can strengthen relationships. Leaders should model collaboration demonstrating its value through their actions and decisions. 23. What steps do you take to build an inclusive and innovative engineering culture? Building an inclusive and innovative engineering culture begins with fostering open communication, ensuring every team member feels valued and heard. I prioritize diverse hiring practices, actively seeking candidates from varied backgrounds. Regular team building activities and collaborative brainstorming sessions encourage creativity and idea sharing. I also promote continuous learning by offering training and development opportunities. Establishing mentorship programs allows experienced engineers to guide newcomers, strengthening relationships and knowledge transfer while creating an environment where innovation thrives. 24. How do you handle conflict between engineering priorities and business demands? Handling conflict between engineering priorities and business demands requires effective communication and a collaborative approach. First, I facilitate open discussions with both teams to understand their perspectives and constraints. By fostering an environment where both sides feel heard, we can identify common goals. Prioritization meetings help align engineering tasks with business needs, ensuring that critical deadlines are met without compromising quality. I encourage the use of metrics and data-driven decision-making to evaluate the impact of different priorities, creating transparency and trust in the process. 
25. What advice would you give to future technology leaders in your organization? Future technology leaders should prioritize continuous learning and adaptability. Embrace change and stay informed about emerging trends and technologies. Foster a culture of collaboration by breaking down silos between teams, ensuring that both technical and non-technical staff can contribute ideas. Focus on building relationships and trust within the organization. Effective communication is key. Encourage innovation and risk-taking while also being prepared to learn from failures. Lastly, align technology initiatives with business goals, ensuring that the technology vision supports the organization's mission and objectives. In this video, we've explored the top 25 chief technology officer interview questions and answers to help you prepare for your next big opportunity. Understanding these questions can give you an edge in showcasing your technical expertise and leadership skills. Whether you're a seasoned professional or stepping into the role for the first time, being well prepared is key to your success. If you found this content helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more insights and resources. Stay tuned for more valuable information to aid you in your career journey.